I know this video is a month late, but between taking some time off for the holidays and then getting COVID, my whole family got COVID right after. Let's just say this is better late than never. I really dug Knives Out, and I just love the concept of a new series of whodunit movies. I need to see the first one again to see which is better, but Glass Onion did not disappoint. Right out of the gate, Benoit Blanc is a great lead despite that awful southern draw. You get used to it, and Craig does a good job in the serious moments, but it often feels like too much of a southern caricature, and like he's doing an impersonation rather than an actual accent or dialect. It's not so much of a complaint or a distraction as it is an observation, but it's not as good as it should be. My gosh, what a cast. On top of Daniel Craig, we have Edward Norton, Dave Bautista, Kate Hudson, Jessica Henwick, Catherine Hahn, Leslie Odom Jr., and a great performance from Janelle Monet. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, especially her. That sold the movie for me alone, and I think it will for a lot of people, and some of these characters play against type or into their type in interesting ways. All in the name of a subversive mystery which Ryan Johnson absolutely loves and can excel at. I found the first act to be a bit slow in getting everything going on the mystery angle, but I was still interested. There's a solid 45 minute of build up to the actual murder, and I think some of it probably could have been trimmed as the film is two hours and 20 minutes or so. But once it gets going, it holds you for the rest of the duration. I occasionally think Ryan Johnson can be a little indulgent in bouncing, showing, and telling, usually going too far one way or the other in almost any project of his that I've seen. How it all comes together here is very clever, but there's a giant twist at the midpoint of the film that I can see being divisive for some folks. But it completely changes the crescendoing nature of the mystery in the film and the pace to an absolute standstill, almost restarting the pacing at zero and working its way back up. At first it's perplexing and interesting and adds new layers, but I would argue that this long stretch sometimes overstays its welcome. However, when the movie settles back in, if it isn't some of the most entertaining twists and turns I've had in a while. It's just a shame Netflix didn't do this as a wider release, as I would have strongly preferred to see it in theaters. But honestly, Ryan Johnson can make as many of these as he wants. Each one being unique, with a Sherlock Holmes quality to them, but modernized, and an undeniable sense of fun and charm really hammer home how much we need more movies in classic genres such as the whodunit murder mystery. It's hard to talk about the brilliance of the actual mystery without spoilers, but the unpredictability, the humor, and the rewards upon rewatch for this and Knives Out make this a gem worth revisiting more than once. Absolutely one of the more memorable and best films of 2022. Final note, I am mixed on the title. I read that Ryan Johnson wanted it to just be Glass Onion, but I also sincerely understand the need to tie it into the successful first title marketing wise so I can see both sides. I give Glass Onion a Knives Out Mystery 4.5 out of 5 stars. Thanks so much for watching. Sorry it was a little late, but we're back and remember to always look for the good.